Welcome to Stockholm, everyone. Now while Stockholm may be a beautiful city to explore, we're actually going to be doing most of our work in the underground. It has one of the most beautiful metro stations in the world. In this tutorial, we are going to be focusing on a few key things. I'll be taking my Fujifilm X-T2 and my iPad Pro, and I'm going to teach you guys how you can shoot and edit your raw photos on the go by transferring them anywhere, anytime onto your iPad to the new Adobe Lightroom Mobile. I'm really excited about this tutorial. I'm really excited to show you guys these new tools and to share a few of my favorite locations in the Stockholm underground. So it's time to leave topside and head underground for some photography. Welcome to the Stockholm Underground. Five years ago in 2011, this was one of the places that I visited when I was establishing my photography portfolio. Now it's really interesting with all the beautiful things above ground in Stockholm, I happen to go underground and find this amazing station that you see behind me. Now, when I originally created this photo, I had no idea it was gonna become so popular, but the combination of the composition, the stairs, the escalators leading up into the ceiling that was red that looked like fire, people started calling this photo the gateway to hell. And I thought it was gonna be the perfect example to show you guys how to set up, shoot, and edit using the new Lightroom RAW mobile tools. Before I get down to the technical aspects of how I'm going to capture this photo, I want to talk a little bit about the location. Again, this is Solna Centrum Station in Stockholm, Sweden. You can visit it any time of the day, but you have to remember that it is an actively busy place which means if you come here in the middle of the day, it's gonna be really busy. So right now it's about, I'm looking at the clock over here, about 11 at night. And what we're doing here at 11 at night is minimizing the amount of people that are here so we can get both clean audio and an empty frame. Now, let's get down to the shot itself. This looks extraordinary already, but it really starts to come into frame at wide angles. So the widest angle you can get if you have a 14 or a 16 millimeter lens, even an 18, you're gonna be able to come away with a great shot. So obviously the shot itself is right behind me, so we're gonna have to switch gears. I'm gonna have to get everything set up so I can explain how to capture this image. So here I am, all set up, in position for this very iconic shot. So I'm using my articulated display here on my Fuji X-T2, and I'm using some very basic settings. I have it set to F8, and I have it on aperture priority. I'm shooting three exposure brackets, and I have the EV shift to negative one. That means my three exposure brackets are gonna be negative two, negative one, and zero. The main thing with this composition is I've been very careful to keep all of my leading lines as perfect as possible. I want a real big emphasis on the ceiling itself, and I'm also trying to use these white lines on the floor as guiding lines to lead the eye into the escalator and then lead the eye up through the red ceiling itself. Something very important about this scene is since people are going up and down this escalator, you have a few choices. So if you want it to have a blurred effect like all the escalators are moving, you can shoot at a longer exposure. So if I turn this up to about F11 or F16, I can get my exposure time to be one to two seconds. When those escalators are moving at one to two seconds, they're actually gonna be very blurry. But if I want it to be static, I could either shoot at a very high ISO to freeze them in motion, but I don't wanna do that. What I'm actually gonna do, since these are power-saving escalators, it means that when people are not going up and down them, that they stop entirely. Since we're here at about 11.30 at night, the station's about to close, nobody's around, they've actually just stopped. They've froze 
in motion because nobody's using them. So now I'm gonna set it back to F8, my normal settings, my three exposure brackets, and now everything is frozen perfectly still. Hey everyone, so I'm still in the Stockholm metro station, which is fine, I didn't go topside for coffee yet, but I'm here to show you a very important thing about this tutorial, which is the new Lightroom Mobile. Specifically, that's complete raw editing in the Lightroom Mobile for iOS platform. That means any raw file you can use in your regular Lightroom desktop, you can use on your iPad. And I'm gonna show you how to get your files from in the field and onto your iPad so you can edit those raw photos in real time. So the first thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need the Lightning to SD card reader from Apple. So once I have this set up, all I need to do is to go ahead and plug it into my iPad. Once I plug that in, the importer is already gonna pop up and the photos are all gonna start to appear. Another thing to note that's pretty important is this is not the only way to get the photos onto the iPad, it's just the way that I like to do it. There are other options to get your photos on as well. Now that Apple Photos has recognized all of my RAW files, I can either select individual ones to bring in, which is what I recommend if you have a lot on your card. But what I'm gonna do, since I've shot very few, is I'm just gonna hit Import All. Once I say Import All, Apple's gonna import every single one of your RAW photos into the camera roll. Once everything's imported into the iPad, it's gonna ask me if I wanna keep my files in my memory card or delete them. In this case, I wanna keep them, so I'm gonna say Keep. Now that everything's imported, what I can do is just get out of the photos, open up Lightroom, and what I'm gonna do is actually first create a new catalog. So I'm gonna go up to this plus sign here, I'm gonna create a new catalog, I'm gonna call it Stockholm. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna go into the Stockholm catalog and I'm gonna say add photos. And I'm gonna add those photos from the camera roll. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swipe my finger across, and as I swipe my finger across, I'm gonna go ahead and select every single one of those photos. So just swipe, 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 keep swiping. The more files you import, the more you'll have to swipe. And I'm gonna add all photos by clicking on this button down here. And just in a few moments, all of those photos that were imported onto my iPad will become available in Lightroom Mobile. Now that all my photos that I shot here in the Stockholm Metro are inside of Lightroom, I can select any of them and I can start editing the raw versions of the photos with many of the same tools found in Lightroom Desktop. But since it's getting really busy and noisy in the subway station, I'm gonna cover those tools and go over how to edit these photos in another more quiet location. Hey everybody, we're now thousands of miles away from Stockholm and I've simulated a little post-processing studio set up here so I can show you the next phase of editing with Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Before we move forward anymore, I have to point out that Lightroom Mobile is a free download, but if you want to unlock the raw editing and the syncing to Lightroom Desktop, you have to have a Creative Cloud account. So if you don't have a Creative Cloud account yet, go ahead and set one up and then you'll be able to sync live raw files from your mobile device to your desktop. So while I was on the plane, let's go ahead and take a look at my iPad here. I actually culled my selection just a little bit. I imported, as usual, way too many raw files, so I cut them down just a little bit, and I ended up with just a few. Now remember, when I was in the Stockholm Underground trying to show you guys some of this stuff, I created a new collection. When I was in the Underground, I actually said that I created a new catalog. What I meant to say was a brand new collection and you can see all those files here. Let's just go ahead and tap on one that I've already done some edits to. Now if we look at the side here on my desktop, as soon as I got in proximity to my Wi-Fi and I created a brand new Lightroom catalog, I first went up to here up in the corner where it says my name and I enabled syncing with Lightroom Mobile. As soon as I did that, every single one of the raw files that was on my iPad here automatically synced with my desktop. And that's not all. Let's take a look at the iPad again. 
So I just want to go over a couple things first before we get into the editing settings. On the iPad itself right now, you can see, I'm going to hit the back uh, button here, you can see all of my files. If I select one file, you can see that I have the file info on the left and I have the histogram on the right. If I use two fingers and tap the screen, it'll cycle through display settings. So right now it shows the file name, my starring flagging, plus the histogram. If I tap, you can see it gets rid of the histogram. If I tap again, it just shows the histogram. So you can show whatever info you want on the screen. Now I like to show the histogram, so we're gonna leave it that way. Now I've already done some editing to this file and I wanna show you guys, if I hit the edit command here, you can see that I've made some changes here. I've made some changes to the contrast, the shadows, and the blacks, but that's not all. I've also made some changes to the local adjustment. So if I press the local adjust button, you can see that I have a couple gradients that I've created here, here, and here. And I also have here, under the radial selection, I've also created a radial selection that takes care of those lights right there. So that's what I did on the airplane using Adobe Lightroom Mobile on my iPad Pro. Now let's take a look at the desktop side. What I want to show you guys, this is the exact same file I just showed you in Lightroom Mobile, and as you can see, every single one of my settings is mirrored and has come through. Not only that, the same gradients that I created are all here with the exact same settings. Now anything that I change here on the desktop side will automatically mirror through the cloud and update on the iPad. Everything that I do on the iPad will then reciprocate and mirror onto the desktop. Now one other thing that I want to point out, Lightroom Mobile has a lot of features, but if you want to use some of the other features like create distortion or you want to do different kinds of sharpening, noise reduction, or you want to do some upright transformations, anything else you use, including presets, on the desktop side will update in Lightroom Mobile. If it's not a feature of Lightroom Mobile, you just won't be able to access or edit it on the mobile side, but it'll all be intact. So that's really, really cool. One other thing you can see here on the desktop side, if I scroll through some of these images, is you notice I have some of them flagged and I have a few of them starred. That's also really easy to do on the mobile side. If I pick the iPad back up, and I hit this little button down in the lower left corner, it's gonna change from my edit settings to my flagging settings. So I can go ahead and flag and rate things while I'm on the road. So while I'm on the mobile side, I can go ahead and kind of wean out the files I wanna work on, the files I don't, and I can go ahead and flag and rate them so that I can tweak them a little bit later. I've already shown you guys how this mirrors back and forth, but since this is a tutorial, let's go ahead and start from scratch so I can show you how to use the Lightroom mobile functions. So instead of using this image here, let's go ahead and start with another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click back to the edit. I'm gonna scroll over and I'm gonna check here. I'm pretty sure, yes I did, I flagged and rated a five star for this image here. So let's start some basic editing on this file. First thing I wanna do is hit the edit command. Once I hit the edit command, I'm going to have a bunch of different options come up. You can see on the left here, if I hit the button, basic tone curve vignetting, split toning color, black and white dehaze, and lens correction. Now, I'm shooting with the Fujifilm X-T2, so I don't have to deal with lens corrections at all. If you're shooting with Canon or Nikon, go ahead and fix the lens corrections first. After that, let's get into the basic adjustments. Now these basic adjustments are gonna mirror Lightroom perfectly. So the first thing that I wanna do here, and I'm looking at my histogram up in the corner, I'm gonna go ahead and start by bringing up the exposure just a little bit, and you can see that command dial comes along. This also works with the Apple Pencil, but it's pretty easy to just use your finger to get these to change. And add a little bit of contrast. Um, I'm gonna pull the highlights down just a little bit, and I'm gonna bring up the shadows so you can see we can start to get some of that detail back, and a little bit of the blacks. Now, what I'm going to do, that's the basic editing and that's pretty simple. I'm going to go into the local adjustments, I'm going to click on the left here, and I'm going to create a linear selection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my finger from the top to the bottom and you can see that I create the gradient. The selected portion will be highlighted in magenta. Once I let go, it's going to give me the options to change this. Now what I want to do with the ceiling is I want to create a heavy contrast. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some contrast. The second thing I'm gonna do is really push those highlights. I want those highlights to pop. I'm also gonna go into the whites and make those whites pop a little bit. Now, to get more contrast, I'm gonna pull the shadows back quite a bit. Now, a little bit different than the standard 
uh, Lightroom, when you use the selective adjustment, you actually get more controls. So if we go up here, we can actually change the noise, the sharpness, the saturation, and we get the famous dehaze slider. So if I start to dehaze a little bit, you can see I'm gonna add some really deep contrast to that image, and that's exactly what I want. So let's just go ahead and make a few more adjustments here. I may wanna bring the exposure and the ceiling down just a little bit, and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new selection. Instead of a linear selection, I'm gonna create a radial selection, and I'm gonna create it right here around these lights. And you guys can see how those lights are really blown out. Now just to fix those lights, I'm gonna go into the highlights and I'm gonna drop the highlights back and you can see those highlights changing right there on the screen. You can also go into the whites, pull that back a little bit. While I'm at it, I'll also bump the shadows just a little bit. So we'll go back to the linear selection. I'm just gonna draw by adding a new one from the bottom to the top. So this time what I wanna do is I wanna pop out all that little detail on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the highlights up I'm gonna pull the shadows down just a little bit on the ground. I'm gonna up the contrast and give it a little bit of dehaze, just to give it a little bit of contrast there. So let me just make some final adjustments. You can see as I just move these, it's just like Lightroom. It's just I'm not using a mouse or a Wacom stylus. I'm actually just using my finger or the Apple Pencil to make these fine-tune adjustments. Anything I need to go back, it's all non-linear, so I can make changes to everything just by moving it, scaling it, or tweaking it, it's actually pretty convenient. So now that I've made these selections, let's take a look at Lightroom Desktop and see if everything mirrored properly. Let's make sure and let's check here. On the desktop, it looks like everything's mirrored over. If I click here, I have my linear adjustments here. I also have my radial adjustments. Now this is pretty cool. Like I said before, is now, since everything's been edited, I can go in and actually fine tune this. So working on the iPad and working on the desktop is completely different. So when I'm working on the iPad, I might be in a coffee shop, usually on an airplane. I might be on a ride to an airport or something like that. So my lighting is changing constantly. The color space on the iPad is a little bit different. And I'm natively used to working on my desktop. So after I make my adjustments on the mobile, side, I usually make further adjustments on the desktop side. So I'm going to do that now. So right now, you know what? I don't want to pull the exposure up that much. I'm going to leave it a little bit down. I'm going to add more contrast. I'm just going to make some slight adjustments here. I'm just going to bring it back, pull the shadows up a little bit, even in these selections here. So my radial selections, I think I can really crank up those highlights, pull down those shadows, crank those whites up. I really want the contrast of that ceiling to come through. Now, dehaze is actually going to give me even more deep contrast, which is really nice. It's also going to make that red color a little bit darker. Same thing on the bottom here. If I add a little bit more dehaze here. I want to add pull up. In fact, you know what? I'm going to bring the shadows up so I can really emphasize that reflection. Now this radial selection, all that was about was just fixing these crazy highlights and you can see as I slide that back and forth. The nice thing with the X-T2 is I can recover those stops really easily. I'm also going to increase the shadows because I really want to look down that tunnel. I have to be careful. I don't think I can tweak the blacks too much. That's just going to make it a little bit too gray. So I think my Lightroom settings look pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with them. I think everything's in harmony. The highlights look good. Exposure looks good. Everything looks like it's ready to go. So the next step, since this is a full workflow tutorial, I don't usually end in Lightroom. What I like to do is after Lightroom, I like to take things into Photoshop and push it a little bit further, add more texture, detail, and of course, sharpness. So now that I'm ready to go, I'm actually gonna right click this file, and what I'm gonna do is export it, and I'm gonna export it as a PSD. Now there are a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna use the export method, but I wanna show you guys, you can actually just go ahead and say, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC, whichever version you're using. Now what this will do is it'll automatically send your file into Photoshop and then it'll bring that PSD back into your Lightroom catalog. I don't want the PSD in my Lightroom catalog, so instead, I'm gonna say export here and I'm gonna show you the settings that I'm gonna use. I use a temp drive on my desktop that I clear out every once in a while. I'm gonna set to PSD, Pro Photo RGB, bit depth, 16-bit, all metadata included, original resolution, no resizing, and after it exports, it's gonna automatically import into Photoshop CC. And I'll click Export to Photoshop. So let's zoom in on a little bit of this detail. I wanna kinda of take a look at what's going on here. 
Now, notice a couple of these spots here. I was shooting with the Fujifilm X-T2, a very early prototype, so these look like they're a little bit of hot pixels here. So what I'm actually gonna do is just gonna go to the heel brush and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more before I do that. I'm gonna go to the heel brush here, and I'm just gonna get rid of these little hot pixels and just fix those. I also wanna get rid of anything like here. There's a little bit of trash. I find that very, very distracting. So with the heel brush, we can just quickly get rid of some of this stuff. Now obviously, if the heel brush doesn't work, we can go to something like the clone stamp, but I think we should be able to get away with these simple adjustments just with a few clicks of the heel brush. I'll zoom out just a little bit, and we'll just make sure that there's nothing here that really stands out as a deal breaker for the detail. I always like to clean it up. And again, there's one more hot pixel. Let's get rid of that. Let's also take a look, make sure there's nothing too distracting on the ground. Doesn't look like it. There's a little bit of trash right here. This looks like scrapes on the ground. We can get rid of these things really quick just by painting over it, giving us a nice palette and starting place to work with. So I'll go ahead and zoom out full screen. Well, this looks pretty good so far. I wanna show you guys one thing. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Now, inside of Lightroom, we've actually been working with Adobe Camera Raw. Now, what's really cool is if you go up to Filter, you can actually access the Camera Raw filter. And when I select that, I'll actually get the same settings that I get inside of Lightroom in the Photoshop environment. Since I exported this very high resolution as a TIFF 16-bit, I can actually do a lot of the same editing and it's very non-destructive. So for example, if I create another gradient like this, I can further go to enhance these effects. So I'm going to go ahead and reset my local corrections because I was working on something else obviously. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull these highlights up here. I'm going to drop the shadows. Uh, I'm gonna drop the blacks a little bit just to really emphasize this, a little bit of dehaze, and I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna use that one. Let's go ahead and create one more for the floor just to put a little bit more emphasis on that. Again, it's gonna mirror my settings, so I'm gonna reset local corrections. And what I'm gonna do is just pull those highlights up just like that. I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast and a little bit of exposure and a little bit of dehaze to add that sort of tonal contrast back in. I'm gonna go back to my basic settings and I'm also gonna add some global, and it's under the effects here, a little bit of dehaze globally, just to pop those details out. We'll go back in and we'll adjust the overall exposure, the overall contrast, and pull those shadows up just a little bit more. And once I click OK, it's gonna apply those effects. Let's take a quick before and after look. There was out of Lightroom with the adjustments, and here's with the Adobe Camera Raw filter. So you can see I added a little bit more contrast. The next thing I wanna do is add sharpness, and I'm gonna be doing that using the high pass filter. It's very simple to use. What I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer, so I'm just gonna drag it to the Make New Layer button, go up to Filter, under the Other, and High Pass. Now what I find with high pass, if you're using anywhere from 24 to 36 megapixel, uh, some value between two and four for your radius works perfectly. I prefer to use three and I'm gonna say okay. Now it's gonna create a 50% gray layer with some outlines. You're gonna see some darker and lighter edges. So I'm gonna change this layer's blending mode to overlay. And if I zoom out a little bit and I toggle this on and off, you can see without high pass, with high pass. So really, if we start to pan around, if we look at this escalator before and after, you can see that it chisels out all of those edges, especially here on the roof, which is what I really want to emphasize. It's going to add a nice bit of grain and detail to that rock and really help bring it to life. So I'll zoom back out. Now this is already looking pretty good, and at this point there are hundreds of ways that we can go with this, but I wanna show you guys one more thing because I'm trying to recreate my classic belly of the beast shot, and everybody, like I said, called it the gateway to hell. It looked like it was a burning ceiling. Now, here's how I achieved the burning ceiling effect. I actually used a dodge and burn layer, and creating a dodge and burn layer is actually very simple. What I'm gonna do is hold the Option key, and I'm gonna click Create New Layer. When I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and name it dodge slash burn and I'm gonna change the mode to overlay it works similar to the way we just used a high-pass filter 
and it's gonna give me an option once I change that to fill it with neutral 50% gray, and I'm gonna say okay. Now if I toggle this on and off, you can see it does absolutely nothing, but that's exactly what I want it to do. With the overlay function enabled, 50% gray is invisible. Anything white will brighten an image, anything dark will burn the image or make it darker. So that's actually what we wanna do here. And what I actually wanna do is using the brush tool, so I'm gonna select the brush, B on the keyboard, and I can change the brush size using the bracket keys on the keyboard. Or on a Mac, I can hold Control, Option, and I can click to drag. On my Wacom Stylus, I actually have that button bound to the click with my thumb here, so I can actively change the brush size from left to right, and then I can change the hardness by going up and down on the fly. So if you have a Wacom tablet, again, that's Option, Control, and Left click, so it's a really useful function. So with my dodge and burn layers selected, I'm now gonna enable the brush tool, and you can see my palette, I can brush on white and black. So let's go ahead and start brushing on some white. And notice my flow is set really low to 2%. Let's go ahead and set that to 5%. Now I have pressure sensitivity enabled as well, and as I start to brush, you can see that it's gonna brighten up parts of these image. So what I'm gonna do is start painting from the center out to the corner, like these are tendrils of fire. Like pretend this is sort of like that movie Backdraft where the fire's just ripping along the ceiling. So I did this in Lightroom a little bit. I brought up the highlights and the shadows, but now I'm really gonna bring this home and paint some of this light in. So I really want these highlights to come alive. So the first thing I'm gonna do, maybe back here a little bit, up here, just really heat that up and make this super super dramatic, just like these are tendrils of flames hitting the corners of the screen. I'm also thinking about this compositionally. So I have these hot lines sort of coming in and pulling the viewer, just like the escalator pulls you up into the scene, these tendrils sort of pull you down into the scene as well. Now if I hit X on the keyboard, it's gonna swap my palette. Now you can do that by clicking this as well. So now I'm gonna start painting black. When I paint black, it's gonna darken the image. So just like I can create detail with the highlights, now I can go ahead and emphasize some of the dark color to really pop out and exaggerate the detail and contrast in the lighting of the ceiling. The designers in Stockholm did most of the work by actually creating this stucco environment, which is amazing. It's like it's carved out of the earth itself. At any point, I can hit X, switch back to white, paint in more white, X again, switch to black, paint in more black, and really, really bring this up. Just bring up this detail. Something else that I might wanna do is I may wanna create a curves layer. So I'm gonna create a curves layer here, and I'm actually just going to bring the values up all the way on that ceiling. So that's gonna heat up the ceiling a little bit more. But I don't wanna heat up the rest of the image, so I'm gonna use the gradient tool, and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and mask out the part that I don't wanna use. So from right now, from black to white or white to black, I just want the ceiling to be affected by that gradient. So you can see that right there just further adds the contrast. If I go back into that curve and just pull this down, you can see that I can add further contrast in that gradient. So we have some sharpening, we have dodging and burning, we have everything else, and we have basically, for this tutorial, our final image. But I wanna do one more thing. I wanna take a look at where we started. I'm gonna go back into Lightroom here, and I'm gonna look at our original image and I'm gonna reset it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set defaults by holding Option, set defaults by clicking, whoops, cancel. Actually, I'm just gonna hit reset. So that resets everything back to the way it is. I'm gonna right click again, I'm gonna export. Since I already have my settings, I can export with previous. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a unique name. What I wanna do is I wanna bring this file into my other PSD. So what I'm gonna do is sort of this little hotkey dance. I'm gonna select all with Command A, select all, and I'm gonna copy with Command C, and I'm gonna close the file with Command W. Now, while I'm in this scene here, I'm gonna paste it in with Command V, and I'm gonna move it down to the bottom. Because what I wanna show you guys now is the build of what we've created. This is what we started. This is the file that I started with when I loaded the raw file into Adobe Lightroom Mobile. This is what I did on the road a little bit, and we tweaked it a little bit here in the studio. This is what I did with the Adobe Camera Raw Filter, so I can actually name this ACRF for Adobe Camera Raw Filter. Here's the sharpening, the dodging and burning, and my final adjustment layer. 
So looking at it from start to finish, we have the before, straight out of camera, to the after. Now again, from this point, we could do so many things this image, but this tutorial is pretty much finished. I just wanted to show you guys how to work in the field, how to capture your raw photos, transfer them to your iPad, and have them sync with your Lightroom desktop. We took things one step further, we brought things into Photoshop, we added a little bit of sharpening, we did some dodging and burning, and we did a few other things to enhance the image and make it more unique. This tutorial was a lot of fun to make. We got to fly to Stockholm, shoot in the underground, which is one of my favorite locations. We got to borrow and set up some temporary studio space and set this up to sync. So I think this was really fun and really informative overall. And if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'll be doing more free tutorials. You can visit my YouTube page at youtube.com slash Locardi. But if you wanna learn more, I've created over 30 hours of high quality downloadable video education, and you can find that all by visiting elialocardi.com. Now these tutorials are not just post-processing. They will take you all the way from in the field, how I set up my camera, how I set up my composition, how I do all of my settings, and then I'll take it through post-processing and I'll start from a very beginner standpoint all the way through advanced concepts. On top of that, I also cover how I blend different moments in time together to get the signature look in my photography. Well, that wraps things up here in the studio, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Now it's time for me to get on to the next project, the next location, and start shooting in another beautiful location somewhere in the world. Hopefully, I'll see you guys out there.